Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Despite rarely ever happening, being buried alive is one of the most common phobias. It's for good reason, though. All throughout history, and even today, people are put into their graves without actually being dead. Have you ever wondered what innovative ways we've come up with to prevent this from happening? Here are the top 10 methods used to prevent being buried alive. Number 10. On Pins and Needles In the 1800s and early 1900s, they used pin pricking to determine whether a patient had died. They believed that if the patient felt pain, it would turn red and close, while a cadaver's body would simply remain an open hole with no change in color. They mainly prick people on their fingertips or soles of the feet, but sometimes they choose particularly painful places like underneath the fingernail. Surely no one would sleep through that, they thought. Several prominent figures of the time made special requests to make sure they were properly dead before heading to the grave. Lady Burton, married to Captain Sir Richard Burton, asked that her heart be pierced and her body be dissected and embalmed. Mrs. Elizabeth Thomas also asked that someone take a long pin to her heart. It seems that being buried alive was a very prominent worry of the time. Number 9. A Quick Injection If you didn't want to be buried alive, would you consider someone doing their best to really kill you instead? That's what some thought was best at the end of the 1800s. One doctor pushed the idea of injecting corpses with strychnine before they were buried, so if they weren't dead already, they surely would be by the funeral. Other doctors thought maybe morphine could be the way, stopping the heart in the case of an undetected coma. Curiously enough, it was also how euthanasia became a common practice, injecting those who were almost dead to end their suffering before they were buried. Number 8. The Old Fingernail Test I know what you're thinking. Can I prevent being buried alive with a method other than more fingernail pain? The answer is apparently no. One of the images most commonly associated with being buried alive is a scratched up coffin, suggesting the victim suffocated to death by trying to claw their way out. Miss Ruby Caroline Aykroyd of London heard these stories and thought, not me. She made a special request that someone test whether she was alive by holding a flame under her fingernails until they burned. She opted out of being buried entirely and asked to be cremated instead. This was a part of a wave of newly adopted trends of cremation precisely to avoid being buried alive. Number 7. The Security Coffin It was only a matter of time before capitalists stepped in to turn a worry into a profit opportunity. This particular capitalist was an inventor named Franz Vester, who made a security coffin made with a bell that a newly awakened person could ring to alert and alarm people that they were not in fact dead. The coffin comes with a rope, a ladder, and a bell. Whether or not it actually helped anyone is a little blurry, but it certainly got a patent and sold units to all those who feared being alive in their own grave. Number 6. High-Tech Security Coffin Less than 20 years after the original security coffin, inventors Charles Seeler and Frederick Borntrager patented a much more sophisticated burial casket. The improvements were way ahead of their time. It included a fan that was triggered by motion of the body, an air pipe leading to the surface, a battery-powered alarm, and even a lamp to lower through the tube to see the face of the body in the coffin. These two inventors clearly had their finger on the <clears throat> pulse of a whole generation of fears of being buried alive. Number 5. Manipulating the Tongue After realizing that fingernail burning and sticking wasn't as effective as hoped, doctors experimented with other methods of reviving bodies. One of these methods is the manipulation of tongues. Dr. J.W. Green of New York recalls seeing a boy who was drowned and almost declared dead until a drop of liquor was placed on his tongue and he coughed and came to. Surely this also could have been because they put him on his stomach, stripped him, and warmed him, but the tongue was believed to be the ultimate reviver. They tried to get the person who was seemingly dead to respond by pulling, pinching, or applying bitter flavor drops to the tongue. 
a physician named J.V. Laborde even came up with a tongue-yanking machine for mortuaries to help even the newest assistants at the morgue determine whether a corpse was alive or not. Number four, modern day monitors. Luckily, if none of the previous solutions appeal to you, we have much more modern options to prevent being buried alive. Nowadays, your body is hooked up to machines that monitor your breathing, heartbeat, and brain waves to assure whether or not your body has activity and also your brain. Even if you can't breathe on your own, many times machines can keep you breathing even past the point of losing brain activity. This is why people consider signing a DNR or do not resuscitate form to avoid being put in that state. Others talk to families so that in the case of being put in that state, they can be removed from life support. In modern times, being kept alive too long is a concern just as serious as being buried prematurely. Number three, keep your heart. People who believed in this method would have their heart removed to be entirely sure that there was no way they'd be in a coffin suffocating to death. It was particularly preferred by the upper class and surgeons of the 1800s would happily oblige even to the request of some that their family be present for the removal to be completely sure. Does this fear sound like it's getting out of hand, time consuming and expensive? Number two, waiting for decay. If you're like many people in the 1800s and feel the pain and, well, death caused by a lot of these methods, you might be interested in this one. Most people of the time would simply leave a body out until it started decaying. This was also a rich people privilege as the poor were buried quickly to prevent disease. By 1898, mortuaries started legally enforcing that people leave the dead there instead of out in their homes to prevent sickness. There, they might also cut an artery to see if blood flowed. Number one, never get buried. This seems like the most secure way to avoid this whole situation, doesn't it? If you're never buried, you'll never be buried alive, right? This was the logic of an 18th century woman named Hannah Beswick. She told her doctor, Charles White, that he could inherit her estate under just one condition. He could never bury her body. Instead, he'd have to check her corpse every single day until he was absolutely certain that she was dead. At some point, he embalmed her, but would continue to observe her, with two witnesses, to see if she showed signs of life. Eventually, he put her in a clock case and moved the once per day observations to an annual schedule. Thanks for watching. What about you? Do you have a fear of being buried alive, even cremated alive? What would you do to dig yourself out of those situations? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, and give this video a like. Then don't get buried in the busyness of your day's activities. Have some fun by watching more videos from us like these. Thanks.